What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 2016 Career Mode Championship. This is round number 13 for the Belgian Grand Prix. The real life race took part yesterday and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. I saw in the comments of yesterday's video, a lot of you guys had a very strong opinion about Max Verstappen, so understandably so, but we're not going to get into that. Here we are for the Belgian Grand Prix and we have an R&D event. Okay, I've got something for you. The new parts have been fitted to the car. The simulation numbers are good, so look forward to your feedback. Check out the details. Just in case you guys missed it, at the end of the last episode, we fitted an engine upgrade just in time for this Belgian Grand Prix, so that's definitely going to come in handy for this race since there is such a heavy reliance on straight line speed and just en engine performance. So that's going to come in handy. We have 420 resource points. And uh, the next upgrade we do might be the last of the season, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Welcome to one of the most unpredictable tracks on the Formula One calendar. Welcome to Spa. It looks like the teams are removing the tyre warmers in the garages, so we should see some action shortly. We're going to be logging some extra data during this session. Nothing you need to worry about, but as we have some new parts, we'll just confirm they're performing to spec. That's a little bit interesting. Maybe we've got additional upgrades that the team has put on um, irrespective of what we're doing in terms of the R&D development. But these are our first laps. Holy hell, that was crazy going up our Rouge for the first time this weekend. That curbing there is uh, really unsettling for the car, so you want to avoid that if you can. Um, yeah, so there might be additional upgrades going on the car that we don't know about, so that's actually really awesome. And he said, you know, do as many laps as you can and um, you will get extra data for for whatever parts we're testing in this session. So I made sure to do a lot of running in this first practice session. Now going back to uh, having one more final upgrade potentially for the rest of this season, I've seen on Twitter a lot of you guys have been tweeting me that you have this option when you get to the Singapore Grand Prix that you can cease development on your R&D for the season and you're going to start working on next year's car. Now, that's going to come into effect at Singapore, possibly. So, before then, I'd love to get one more major upgrade on the car um, to really see us out for the rest of the season. Um, I've heard it's really beneficial to, um, you know, uptake that, that offer from the team because it really sets you up really well for the second season. So, if we do get that offer from the team to cease development on the R&D, then I'm definitely going to do that at Singapore. But... As you can see at the end of the session, we end up in P14, just a fraction behind our teammate once again. I don't know what it is about myself and Pascal, but uh, we just continue to find each other glued together in terms of, you know, being on track or being very close to each other in terms of the results. So it's 14th place. That was uh, the end of practice two, where we did a qualifying pace run on the soft compound tires. So... As you can see, we're pretty much on the pace. We've moved up a little bit compared to Germany, where we were like 14th and 15th. Now we're 13th and 14th, so the upgrade has made a little bit of a difference. But if we were on the super softs, then I think we could have found a little bit more time. So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see how this season is progressing for us. But that's the end of practice now. It's time to get into qualifying now and see where we start on the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. It's qualifying time at Spa, one of the mightiest tracks on the Formula One calendar. Long straights, up and downhill, Eau Rouge as well. This track isn't for the faint-hearted. That is definitely correct, Crofty. Here we are for qualifying now for the Belgian Grand Prix. We are electing to run with just super softs for this session. Um, I elected to go with the, uh, the soft, aggressive tyre strategy for this weekend, so I only have super softs to use in this qualifying session. So we'll see how we go. At the moment, it looks like we're setting down a pretty decent uh, bank of time at the moment. We come up to the line and we set a 1 minute 47.995. Now... That is the best time I've set around this track on F1 2016 by a long way. I've done a few F1 2016 online races around this track and couldn't crack under the 1 minute 50. So that just shows um, that is a really, really solid time that we've laid down at the moment. Uh, well inside the top 10, I believe. Um, as you saw there, we were following along with uh, Pascal's lap, seeing how he got on. He's down in 12th place at the moment. We still sit in P6. But as we go out to set our next uh, qualifying lap, We've dropped uh, six places, so uh, a decent chunk of the front runners and midfield runners got their laps in, and now we've got some work to do here in the middle part of this session. So, as you can see here, this is our run to the top of our Rouge, where Kevin Magnussen had his almighty crash in yesterday's race. Um, it was really just frightening footage of 
him losing the back end as he went over the curbs there. Um, hopefully he's able to race in the uh, Italian Grand Prix next week. But I'm going to walk you guys through this lap. This is my uh, quickest lap of the session. And uh, you can see we are just over a tenth up on our previous personal best at the moment. So it's looking very good at the moment. And uh, yeah, just trying to maximize every little bit that I can with this Manor Racing car. Coming to the no-name corner, I accidentally left it in fifth gear for the majority of that corner. I was like, hang on a second, what am I doing here? Back down to fourth, cost me a little bit of a time, little bit of time through Puon now and uh, sixth gear. You can take it through there in seventh if you're in a front-running car, but I just don't have the downforce to carry that kind of momentum. Running wide through this right-hander, and uh, it's kind of cost me about half a tenth to a tenth through there, which is uh, a little bit disappointing. Down to third gear. In the race, I learned you could take that probably in fourth gear if you really slow it down enough and punch onto the straight there. A little bit naughty there with how, how wide I ran, but uh, we're going to carry on three and a half tenths up on our previous personal best. So this should be a mid-47. And uh, hopefully this can get me inside the top 10. That'll be absolutely amazing if we can. Ladies, you dare under brakes into the bus stop chicane. Hit the curbs on the way in and on the way out. On the power very early. Lost the back end on the curb as I opened the DRS. Cost me a bit of time. And probably negated the amount of time that I gained by running wide um, at the uh, in the middle sector there. So, uh, yeah, it is... Where did we end up? I think it was 10th or something like that. But uh, unfortunately, I tried as quickly as I could to try and um, get back out there and set my final run on the uh, super soft tires. But uh, it just wouldn't let me have it there. So that's a bit unfortunate. And uh, it looks like we're going to... I think we're in P12 now. So we're going to hold on to P12, hopefully. Hopefully no one sets a faster lap. But we are following Pascal at the moment. He is in 22nd place in this uh, qualifying session so far. So... A little bit disappointing where Pascal is at the moment. He's on his fin final flying lap now, so he needs to deliver right now. But there's traffic in front. He runs into the back of a Mercedes, who I believe was Nico Rosberg, who was getting held up by another car who was pulling into the pits there. So Pascal doesn't get a lap in. Look at all those um, grid penalties for Lewis Hamilton, Kimi Raikkonen, and Vettel as well. That is absolutely ridiculous. We're going to jump up a few places in this in this uh, Belgian Grand Prix, I reckon. We may end up starting inside the top 10. So that's been this uh, qualifying session. As you can see, the grid penalties were awarded for contact. So Ricardo, Hamilton, Raikkonen, and Vettel all making contact with each other. And Nasa got a, a, a grid penalty as well for making contact with Sebastian Vettel. So... That is very, very interesting. It's definitely going to spice up the start of this race. But without further ado, let's get into this race for the Belgian Grand Prix. In the 48 races held at Spa between 1950 and 2015, the race winner has only started from pole position on 16 occasions. Qualifying yesterday may have set the order for today, but expect the unexpected here at the Belgian Grand Prix. As the saying goes, of course, anything can happen. And you know what? It usually does. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardennes Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. I mean, Monaco is uh, my favourite track, but a very, very close second on the Formula 1 calendar definitely has to be this Belgian Grand Prix. I love this first lap, the run up our Rouge, and onto the Camel Straight. Nothing compares to the first lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen, by the way, qualified on pole for this race. I uh, didn't actually manage to pick that up at the end of qualifying. I was uh, a little bit too focused on my own efforts, but great to see that uh, Max actually got pole position around this racetrack. So we'll have to wait and see how we go in this one. It looks like we're doing a one-stop, starting on the soft compound tires, then going to the mediums to run to the end of this race. So it's uh, going to be a massive benefit for us to not start on the super soft tires because we know that they're essentially a, a dud tire to run in the race. So uh, the last thing we want to do is 
you know, make an extra pit stop in this race. So what I think might happen is the majority of this field are going to be doing a two stop, whereas I'm going to be doing a one, holding on to track position and seeing where we end up in the race. I feel like I'm going to be stronger than what I was in qualifying. I didn't put in the absolute best of laps. I only got two runs in. I could have got a third in, so... I really feel like we are, you know, a genuine top 10 runner possibly, especially with our Mercedes powered engine. We were one of the fastest in the speed traps. So overtaking for us should be an absolute piece of cake. Here we go, five red lights for this Belgian Grand Prix and away we go for this race start, starting on the soft compound tires. I wasn't expecting a miracle, but we have moved up one place of this initial start round the outside of Hulkenberg. Can we make that stick? No, we can't. There's essentially no room for us to get through there. We're going to have to out-traction him. On the run-up to our Rouge, oh my goodness me, there was a gap there on the right-hand side, but the wall was ever-closing there. We just squeezed through and move into position 8. So let's see what we can do now on this first of 22 laps for this Belgian Grand Prix. Everyone is slipstreaming each other, so let's see what we can do. I think it was 223 miles an hour we topped out at there, so that is absolutely ridiculous straight line speed there. We're going to make full use of that as soon as the DRS becomes active on lap 3. As you can see, the guys in front of us squabbling quite a bit. Hamilton is struggling to find a way around Carlos Sainz, so uh, we'll see what we can do on him. We try and do a miracle overtake around the outside of Hamilton. I don't know what I was thinking there. I left myself exposed there to Nico Hulkenberg from behind. Thankfully enough, he uh, didn't make the move stick there in. He showed the nose there, but we hold on to track position for now on lap two. Hamilton is desperate to find a way around Carlos Sainz, and he just about touches the grass and the white painted lines there. And uh, he's uh, slowed himself up quite a bit. We go for a bit of a dive up the inside. We uh, mount the curbing a little bit to leave Hamilton some space. Also oversteered under brakes, which didn't help things out there. Massa getting shoved down under the toodles there by Daniel Kvyat. And uh, we can see, we'll see if we can uh, make use of this as well. Kvyat, what are you doing, fella? Has he, got his, has he got his front wing still? I'm not too sure what the deal is there. He was going very, very slowly into that second gear corner. And uh, you can see on board from Hamilton there, he's, he's now getting overtaken from uh, the other Williams, that's Bottas. So uh, Hamilton just getting absolutely monstered in this race. Meanwhile, we're taking all the chances that all the uh, opportunities that get presented in front of us. Meanwhile, Kvyat goes for a move around the outside at Al Rouge. Doesn't quite have the bravery or the techers to, uh, to stick with that move. And we hold on to what was P6, I think it was. No, P4. But uh, either way, it's lap 6 now. And uh, all the leaders who started on super soft tyres have now pulled into the pits. Way! That's Lewis Hamilton out of the race, by the way, fellas. What's going on here? He's following a Sauber very closely around the outside. He shouldn't do that. Is that what caused him to crash? No, it wasn't. He had an engine failure. So Lewis Hamilton is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. It didn't start well, and it hasn't finished well either for the Englishman. So we pull into the pits on lap 9. This is the uh, lap that we decided to stop uh, a lap earlier just to get the undercut. I felt like this would have been a, a really good strategy ploy to stop a little bit earlier in the race and try and um, make a case to hold on to track position a little bit early if we came in just one lap early. So uh, we'll see what happens. The uh, overall race time did get slowed down by that much, as you saw in the race strategy. It was only by like a tenth, so I opted to stop a lap earlier than what was scheduled. So we rejoin on the track, and we're going to be very close to this pack of cars in front of us, which include Hulkenberg, Massa, and Carlos Sainz as well. So just think, guys, if we would have stopped a lap later, we wouldn't have been able to join onto the back of this queue here, but now we're very close to them, and we can use them for slipstream and drag us along in this race on fresh tyres. So at this point in the race now, you're going to see a lot of uh, runners inside the top 10 here making their final stops of this race. We go for a little look up the inside of Felipe Massa there. Fairly textbook move on someone who has uh, older tyres. So like I said, you're going to see a lot of cars in front of us making their stops now. We put the uh, engine mixture up to Rich to try and catch up to the next group of cars. Fernando Alonso has retired from the Grand Prix and... Not too sure what that was for. I don't believe it was for a crash. It looked like it was just a reliability problem because there was no no debris on the circuit, so I'm guessing that's what it was for. The virtual safety car only lasts for 20, 30 seconds. It was a brief opportunity for me to save fuel and um, just uh, gather my thoughts before we go fully racing again. So, end of lap 11 now, you'll see Nico Hulkenberg pull into the pits. Same with uh, Kvyat and the Williams around us. So, 
It's uh, starting to look really good for us now in this race as we move well inside the top 10 here. The likes of Carlos Sainz, the other Williams are going to start pitting as well. But Pascal Wehrlein is out of the Grand Prix. What's this for? Does he crash? No, of course not. It's an engine failure. That is so, so unfortunate to see my teammate out of the Grand Prix considering he was just outside the top 10 before that happened. It must be so frustrating for him. Frustrating for me as well to see that my teammate doesn't score points. But now lap 14, the race really starts to open up for us here as we move into the lead of this Belgian Grand Prix. With seven laps to go, we genuinely lead this race. We don't need to make any more pit stops and it's gonna be a straight up fight for us to hold on to win our first race in this 2016 career mode. Can we do this, lads? I'm not too sure. I'm gonna push on as much as I can. You can see the gap to Raikkonen behind us. It's only a few seconds, and there's still a good five, six laps left in this race. And five, six laps is a long time around Spa. The lap times are so long, but you can see Raikkonen already has already closed up the gap to us. So, you can, you, can, you can clearly see that we don't have the pace to run with the leaders here on fresh tyres, but I've got the straight line speed, that's all that matters. If I can hold on to track position, or at least stay in the slipstream, we might be half a chance in this race. You can see Raikkonen going around the outside through Blanchemont now. Does he make it stick? No, he doesn't. He backs out of it there. So, that's one area where we have advantage over the AI, but coming on to the Camel straight now, it's going to be OP slipstream for these guys around this uh, section of the track and look at that they just fly past us even though we're running uh, we, I think we were running in rich revs briefly but I gave up the ghost there put it down to standard and just tucked in to the slipstream there we've got to stay with these guys and as you can see that's the replay of us losing the lead of the Grand Prix it's uh it's not what you want to see unfortunately I could not hold on to that track position I could not stay with the two leaders there they were running in a pace that I just could not keep up with. So, unfortunately, it's going to be us just trying to hold on now for the podium positions in this Grand Prix. Three laps remaining in this race. And Verstappen is all over us and the Red Bull slower in a straight line. So that might, might give us, you know, half a chance to hold on to track position. He goes up the inside into Lake Com and he just hangs on to that position there. So we're going to try and stick with him if we can. But, uh, I don't know, I'm not liking our chances here. We weren't able to stick with the uh, leaders of Raikkonen and Rosberg. And uh, we don't have as much chance against Max Verstappen, unfortunately. Medium tyres really starting to let go at this back end of the race here. Vettel around the outside through Blanchemont. And uh, he already has a car's length advantage by the time we even turn in for that kink there. So, I could have gone for a dive up the inside into the bus stop chicane. Wasn't really feeling it. Didn't have the confidence on these older tyres, but we did give him a little bit of a push there on the exit of the final corner there. So last lap of this Belgian Grand Prix, the gap to the cars behind is three and a half seconds. So fingers crossed we can hold those guys off. They are a bit slower than the cars that have passed us already. So I think we should be just about able to hold on to P5, which is going to be a magnificent result, by the way. Ten points in a manner. It's unheard of, but we've just done it today. As the adrenaline dies down after another eventful Grand Prix, here come the top three, out onto the podium. So there we go guys, that is the end of the Belgian Grand Prix. I don't know if you could tell there, but the crowd was so overbearingly loud, they kind of drowned out the music while the uh, drivers were spraying their champagne there, but in the end, it's fifth place and today was a massive step for the team. I must say, this is the closest we have looked to winning a race and also like looking like we were going to score on the podium there. Massive, massive development has been going on behind the scenes and uh, we've just taken baby steps over the course of this season and when we're slowly getting there. Today was fifth place and it looked pretty damn convincing. The first time we've you know, really looked this solid since Monaco and uh, we all know that that's a pretty OP track for us anyway. So that's been the Belgian Grand Prix guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. 
driver's standings, we move back into 10th place up to Fernando Alonso, unfortunately retired midway through that Grand Prix. So we're seven points clear of him, and it looks like we might be well on target to possibly finishing inside the top 10 in the driver's standings. Constructors, nothing really going on there. We're kind of just kind of cementing our position in seventh at the moment. So it's uh, it's good science at Manor. And we're only, you know, three quarters of the way into our first season. Uh, resource points, we have... 900 this might push us over to almost a thousand there 992 resource points in the bank for our race team and uh, that's definitely going to be spent on a critical uh, upgrade on the car now I originally was going to go for the engine but considering we might be stopping development after the next race I want to put something on the car that's going to benefit me around all tracks on the calendar. So, what I'm going to go for is the chassis weight, a reduction in uh, overall weight in the car, and it's going to benefit me around all tracks. So, fingers crossed that works out the best. Uh, I feel like weight reduction is probably the most critical uh, area of the car that we can improve apart from downforce. So, uh, it's definitely going to be a much needed uh, component. That's going to be improved on the car, and it's going to benefit us around all race tracks. Uh, leading up to the end of this season. So that's going to be put on the car right now and it's going to be ready by the time we get to the Italian Grand Prix and it's going to make us faster in a straight line. It's going to make us better through the corners. Going to make the uh, the overall balance of the car feel better. It's just a win-win scenario when you reduce weight in the car. So I feel like that's probably the best overall upgrade we could have gone for, you know, of the uh, options listed there. Like we could have gone for engine power, but I feel like weight reduction kind of does the same thing but uh it, it just benefits you around all tracks so there we go that upgrade is going on the car for the next race and that has been this episode for today the belgian grand prix so very close to winning a race there maybe even getting a podium there unfortunately just didn't have the pace at the back end of that race i felt like if i was a little bit more consistent a little bit faster i feel like a podium definitely would have been on the cards for that race so I feel like a podium might only just be a few races away, maybe in the start of season two or something like that, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys for a brand new video very soon.